This video was brought to you by Indently.io, learning Python made simple. How's it going everyone? In today's video, we're going to be exploring five more useful f-string tricks that you can use in Python. And the reason I'm making this video is because you guys really loved the previous one. And if you haven't seen the previous one, I've left a link to it in the description box down below, which I absolutely recommend you check out before watching this video, because I'm going to be using a lot of the tricks from the previous video to explain how these ones work. Anyway, for trick number one, we're going to pretend we have a huge number and we're just going to call that big number. And this big number is going to equal 1,620,000,000. So it's quite a big number. And yes, you can also write that out in scientific notation. But suppose you're getting it back from an API or from some sort of calculation. When you print this number, it's going to display the whole number inside the console. But something cool you can do instead is specify it to be in the format of scientific notation. And you can do that just by providing an E. And like this, it still looks just as ugly. It still takes just as many spaces as if we were to see the entire number. So something that's even more useful than that is specifying how many decimal places we want to use with this scientific notation. For example, we can type in dot two E and then it will give us back this scientific notation, which in Python you can write out as 1.62 e to the ninth. And that will give us the exact same result, except that would have to be a float. Moving on to trick number two. And for this example, I'm going to import from date time, date time, so that we can fetch the current date and time. And that's going to equal date time dot now. And originally in the previous video, I showed you that we could format this datetime object using a datetime specifier. So here we could insert, let's say the day dot the month dot the year. And if we were to run that, we would get our date formatted according to our specifications. But one thing I didn't show you is that we can actually insert a variable here instead of hard coding the string. For example, maybe we have a different specifier we want to use or maybe we have several specifiers that we want to use. So one nice thing we can do is create a variable and store this inside that variable. Then you're probably thinking this is quite straightforward. All we need to do is insert the date time specifier here. But that's not going to work, of course, because this is where we insert our F string specifiers. So it's not going to understand that this is supposed to be a variable. But one thing that's quite silly that you can do is nest your f strings so that you can use a variable as a format specifier. And now we can edit this from anywhere. So if we were to run this, we will get the exact same result. And you can do this with any specifier. And as another example, I created a huge number, which is quite ugly with a lot of decimal places and a lot of zeros. And here I decided to create a specifier of comma dot two f. So that's going to round our number to two decimal places and it's going to insert a thousand separator for each thousand. And as you could see, just like with the date, I was able to insert it as a variable using some nested parentheses. So now if we were to run this, we would get this formatted number. Trick number three. In Python, it can be quite tricky to refer to a file path. And that's because some file paths require us to use backslashes, which in Python also work as an escape. And that means that it might escape something as a Unicode character. It might escape something using that escape code syntax. And you never know where this is going to happen. Or I mean, if you know how escaping works, you do know where this is going to happen, but you just don't want this to happen in your path. So one of the very first things we learn in Python is to create a raw string if we're going to use a file path. And to do that, we just need to insert an R in front of our string. And then we can print that path without any issues. And I believe the backslash is mostly used on Windows because as you can see on Mac, everything uses a forward slash, but that's not the point. The point is that sometimes you're going to have backslashes that escape characters that you do not want to escape in your strings. But something really nice to know is that you can combine these raw strings with F strings. For example, maybe we don't want to use a random folder. Maybe we want to dynamically update that with a new folder name each time we run the script. And to do so, I'm going to go above that and create something called custom folder, which will be a type string and it's going to equal indently, the most important folder on my computer. 
And to make this work with F strings, all we need to do is insert an F in front of the R or after the R. And that will allow you to use both the raw string and the F string together. Personally, I like to use F in front of R because it just makes me think of France, but you can pick whatever combination you prefer. But once you've done that, you can insert your custom folder. And the next time we try to print this path, we should get our custom folder printed. Up next, we have trick number four. And for this example, I'm going to create two variables, one called A of type float, which has the value of 0.1, and another one called B, which is also of type float with the value of 0.2. And what we're going to do with both of these is print the sum which by this point, if you've been programming for quite a while, you'll know is going to give us back the most ugly number ever. And just to demonstrate it, we're going to add a plus b, and we're going to use that quick debugging syntax. So now when we run this, we should get a result such as this one. And we learned this in the previous video, but one thing I did not show you in the previous video is that you can combine the quick debugging syntax with format specifiers. So if we want to format the result, we can add a colon, and we can do something such as 0.1f. And the next time we run this, it's actually going to format it according to what we inserted as a format specifier. And that's really cool because now we have more control over what our f string can do. And just to show you one more example, I'm going to create a random name called Bob. And here we're going to print that the name is equal to, and I'm going to use the exclamation mark and s. And all this is saying is that this should be interpreted as a string because by default, when you are using this syntax, it prints the representation. But by using this syntax, we're telling Python that you should print it as a string. So as you can see, the name is now equal to Bob. Without this, we're going to get the representation. So the name is equal to the string of Bob. And the string of Bob might be much more descriptive. So personally, I would probably leave it at that. But it's good to know that in case you don't want that, you can change it back to a string just to get Bob as an output. And now it's time for the final trick. And this is something really cool that I just learned today. So for this example, I'm going to import from date time, the date and time and the date. Then I'm going to create a banana of type string, which is going to be the banana emoji. And below that, I will create a name, which is completely random called Bob. And I'm going to get today's date, which is going to be of type date. And that's going to equal date time dot now dot date. And now that we have these three variables, we can print first the date. And I'm also going to include this special syntax, which again, converts whatever variable we're using to its string form. And then we're going to say that the name with the exclamation S once again, says the most important phrase in the world, which is banana, which will once again contain the string format specifier. And this should actually be around the date. And next, we're going to duplicate this two times, because what I want to do here is change this to an R. And for the final one, we're going to change it to an A, just so we can compare these three. And that's supposed to be an R. How dare you infiltrate that line A? And actually, before we run this, I made a major mistake, and that is to insert the date instead of today. But now let's run our script and analyze the result. So I'll just scroll up a bit so you can see these as well. And for our first print statement, we get the string representation for each one of our variables. So everything prints as normal. We get today's date and we get that Bob says banana. For the second print statement, we are printing the representation of each variable. So here we get the date time object, we get the string of Bob and the string of banana. And for the final one, we get the ASCII representation which means the date time object will just be printed as follows because there's not really an ASCII representation for that and neither is there one for Bob, but for banana, we're going to get it printed as a Unicode. So that's just some other really cool syntax that you can use with F strings. But anyways, those were the five F string formatting tricks that I wanted to bring up today. Do let me know in the comment section down below which ones were your favorites, but otherwise, as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.